The Juneferno channel is often compared to other non-Juneferno channels here on the internet, undoubtedly due to my charismatic, expressive internet personality. However flattering though, I do hope that I'm retaining some originality. Though as they say, if you can't beat them, give up. And so why not just talk about what's popular? That's right, let's talk about microcontrollers. <laughs> Microcontroller is a controller that is micro, and they actually are quite popular on the internet. They're up there with VTubers and bullying. And that's probably because microcontrollers are everywhere. Look at the device that you're using to watch this video right now. That is not a microcontroller, but it is a computer. Of course, the computer that you're using personally is not necessarily a personal computer or PC. It could be a phone or a tablet or a television for some reason, or any other device that can run a YouTube client. What makes a computer a computer is that it computes, and to do this you'd conventionally at least need a processor, memory, as well as input and output. For example, on the computer that you're using right now, if you use your mouse or touchscreen or television remote, Mode to input a click on the subscribe button, then your processor will process that request and perhaps store some variable in your memory representing a subscription, and in turn, the screen connected to your computer will output a notification every three months if I feel like it. Now this example of a computer is an example of a general purpose computer. You're not only using your PC or phone for watching videos, you'll probably also use it for being productive and socializing with your many friends. It's not exactly a supercomputer, but it needs enough computational power to run an operating system that does all these things. But not everything that computes needs to be general purpose. Your microwave doesn't need Windows 11 to heat up your silverware. And so, for relatively simpler specific tasks, maybe we just need a computer that is smaller. A controller that is micro, perhaps. When it comes to machines with specific purposes, like microwaves, automobiles, tasers, taser Roombas, it's all about efficiency and also actually working, but efficiency matters as well. The Arduino Uno is a fairly popular circuit board presenting to my desk. Arduino meaning the company and Uno meaning first. The Arduino Uno is like the 9th or 13th Arduino. As expected, the Arduino Uno has a processor, which is an 8-bit CPU that it can use to run programs. It also has memory pools such as SRAM to read and write data while the programs are running, as well as EEPROM to read and write long-term data. It's worth pointing out that there's actually a third piece of memory called the flash memory, which is where the actual program is stored and loaded from so that the processor can run it. And since it only needs to run one program, this is sufficient. Note that in combination with a few pins of different types of input and output, the Arduino has all the parts to be considered to be a small computer. And so, with all of that, if we just attach a few peripherals to our microcontroller, we can make a very simple robot. Except we can't, because it's hard, and I'm not a hardware developer, but also because the Arduino is not the microcontroller. Everything I've described up to this point has actually been the ATmega 328P, which is indeed an 8-bit microcontroller with SRAM, EEPROM, and flash memory. But a microcontroller isn't just any small computer, it is in fact a small computer that exists on a single chip. This makes engineering a bit more difficult, with a lot of wiring going on. One of these difficulties being actually connecting this standalone chip to your PC in order to burn programs into the flash. The ATmega 328P microcontroller is actually included as part of the Arduino Uno, as well as several other Arduino boards. It's right here next to the Made in Italy label, or if you're looking at a Chinese knockoff, next to the Made in Italy label. The Arduino is thus a development platform for the microcontroller. Your average electronic appliance would probably just use a microcontroller as it doesn't need an entire Arduino. But for the amateur developer, the Arduino provides all the boring setup stuff you would have had to do to do development already set up. 
The Arduino board connects the microcontroller to a system of components. On the Uno, this includes a voltage regulator, some rows of input-output pins, and a USB port. Through the USB port, we can connect our Arduino to our PC to transfer over a program that can be burnt into the flash. On the software side, or on the PC, this program is called a sketch. Wow, this is just like sketching. But it's really just a C++ file that uses Arduino's libraries. In the sketch, we can read the input, write the output, and determine all the logic that we do with them, and on the board we just have to wire on our input and output peripherals, allowing us to just do these two things without having to worry about all the stuff that goes on between them. And hence, hardware engineers can pretend like they know how software works, and software engineers can pretend like they know how anything works. Arduino is not the only development board, though there are many others with their own microcontrollers and features, though a large portion of them are based on, or at least compatible with the Arduino such as Freeduino, Seeduino, Bambino, Arduini, all very traditional Italian names. Thus, with all these development boards and the popularity of Arduino's simplicity, microcontroller prototyping became a common hobby. Regardless, even though boards such as the Arduino remove the challenge of connecting the software to the hardware, engineering these two elements on either end can still be challenging. Once the sketch is uploaded, the microcontroller knows to just keep on looping whatever's in the loop function until it gets it's manually terminated. And so it makes sense to make something that has a sensor and keeps on checking that sensor and then does something when that sensor senses something. But that's enough of the introduction. Time to... Up until now, the example used has been a motion sensor connected to a servo motor. However, this example is purely demonstrative. Both of the peripherals are rather weak, and the whole thing doesn't really do anything to begin with. The stepper motor is another type of motor that rotates in steps. Now, generally speaking, stepper motors don't necessarily have higher torque than servo motors, especially as you increase the speed of rotation, but this particular stepper motor, which is meant for 3D printers, has a higher torque than this particular hobbyist servo motor, just on account of being a more expensive, higher quality model. In physics, torque is the product of radius and force, and with a fixed radius, it's just something that's directly proportional to the force. Though all of these are just made up words that mean how strong something is spinning. And we can consider it to just be that. Engineering, after all, is just simplified physics. Now to connect this motor to our Arduino is more complicated, but only slightly. We have to connect it to a chip called the driver, which helps us control the motor, as well as a higher voltage power source. If we don't use a higher voltage power source, then the motor just vibrates without rotating. But we can still do things like this. Now even once we've gotten the motor to start spinning, as we understand these concepts of torque and force, we still have to apply these fundamentals into something that does something. Physics, after all, is just simplified engineering. Now any respectable, legitimate mechanical engineer would probably use some sort of modeling software to model and then print out some sort of mechanism that can be perfectly fitted to the motor and optimize motion. I taped a fly swatter to it. And all that's left to do is to write the remaining parts of the program, including the part in which we hurt ourselves in some comical way, as well as actually process the input. For simplicity, we can just use software as our input. Here is a program that just checks whenever I click like on a tweet on Twitter that just takes a few seconds to make. And we can send that input to our microcontroller through our serial USB port. Well, time to browse Twitter. Well, I guess I'll just stick to software, but hey, at least I can go back to being original. <laughs>